All right, so waiting for the bus. It should be said one minute, so. That's why I want to get out the Bronx. It's just too much hills. Too much hills in the Bronx. Y'all see them hills? That man with the cane got to walk up there. I guess they say, well, we make it. You want to live in it? You got to deal with it. I got to go to the bathroom. I can't drink nothing else till I get home. I guess it ain't one minute because I don't see it. This is stuck in traffic on the on the bridge. So let me tell you what I was going to tell you. Uh, why last night? Now, if y'all seen my video about go get your, your husband's wives, whatever. I um, was talking on marriage. I think it was day before yesterday. Yeah, it, was day before. it could have been yesterday morning. It could have been in the morning. But the video is there. And I get to church, right? Uh, Bishop looks at me turns around, asks Sister Kathy, you got a scripture? The thing looks at me. So I was being led to read, to read scripture. And why I read 1 Corinthians 7, if I'm correct. Talking about marriage, that the man's supposed to only have one wife and one husband. You ain't supposed to leave her. But if she wished to go, if if the if the wife, if the husband wished to to stay, if you being sanctified, hang on, hang on. I want to say it right because it's very important that I get this right because I know there's a lot of married couples out there, or non-married couples, or even divorcees or people that's getting a divorce. So let me go to my Bible right quick and make sure I get the right scripture. Come on, open up. Okay, so it was First Corinthians 7, if I'm correct. Another one. Okay, here we go. I'm going to read it to y'all. Now, this is 1 Corinthians 7. A lot of people got some issues with Paul. I ain't got no issues with Paul. People be saying, that's what Paul said. Paul said that. What people is not understanding is that Paul was an apostle of God. So, the things that he felt and he was saying based on his feelings, he would say, this is I, not the Lord. Anything beyond that, if, if I'm reading something that Paul written, any of his epistles, and he's writing and he don't say that, I'm taking it. Whatever he's writing came from the Lord. So I'm not going to discredit Paul. That's wrong to do. Because whatever's in the Bible, if you discredit in Paul, that means you're discrediting what God said. Because Paul wrote what God said. What he wrote that he said 
he said, this is, this is not the Lord, this is I. And then some other a pastor, she said, not I, but the Lord. Okay, so now let's go back to what he said. Paul answers church questions. After discussing this 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 16 and 24, verse 24. All right, let me say that again. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 to 16 and verses 24. After discussing disorders in church, Paul moves to the list of questions that the Corinthians had sent him, including subjects of marriage, single, singleness, eating meat, offered to idols, propriety in worship, holiness in the Lord's Supper, mm, spiritual gifts, and the resurrection. The resurrection. Questions that plague churches today are remarkably similar to these. That's why God knew what he was writing. He had Paul write things so that we could understand how to live them today. Not make up our own decisions and talk about, I don't want to hear what Paul say. Okay. Okay, questions that plague churches today are remarkably similar to these. So we can receive specific guidance in these areas from this letter. This is the letter to the Corinthians. Now, let's go on. Instructions on Christian, Christian marriage. And this is what I would tell people when they talk about marriage. I would say, listen, we as saved folks, we are supposed to give, we're supposed to be in a holy matrimony. First of all, you know, our, our, our marriage is supposed to be Christian. We ain't supposed to be getting ourselves married to someone that's unsaved if we are Christian. So therefore, if you are a, a saved husband, why is you Oh, I thought that was the man with her. She is. Okay. If you are a saved man, then you are supposed to have a saved wife. If you are a saved wife, you ain't got no business looking for no unsaved man. If you are a saved woman, you got no business looking for unsaved men. You're supposed to wait and let God bring you the man for you. Right? Okay, so let's move right along. And we're talking about Christians. We ain't talking about people that are unsaved. We ain't talking about sinners. Now, you're a Christian and you commit in sinful ways then you're falling back into the sinful lifestyle. But if you are a Christian, this passage that I'm speaking on now is for you. Now, concerning, again, 1 Corinthians 7, one instruction on Christian marriage. And the first verse says, now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Right now, this is in general. I think he took that into a general aspect, right? Yeah, that's the general. He starts off in the general aspect. So, if you are unsaved, they saying now concerning the things well, he's answering questions that the people wrote to him, that the Corinthians wrote to him, right. So this can apply to us today in 2024 because the Bible was written over 2,000 years ago. I have a long you want to say it was written so that we'll be able to, to live it today in the world and the time that we are in today. Okay. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. What is it saying? You can lust all you want, even though God said, Jesus said, that a man already committed adultery in his heart if he lusted. All right, here come my bus. 